The race has begun for the NDP leadership. One of the top contenders is Brian Topp. Quebec-born, Ontario-based, experience in the prairies. Topp was recently elected party president of the NDP back in June. He's never been elected an MP, at least not yet, but he does seem to be the choice of the NDP establishment to take over. Brian Topp is here in studio with us. So, so why you? Why do you think you have what it takes to take over this party? Well, nobody once wanted to take over the party. We all wanted to work to make Jack Layton prime minister, but unfortunately that was taken away from us. And so he said, remember me and carry on my work. And so a number of us are thinking about doing that. So I'm stepping forward because there's some things I want to talk about. I want to talk about the theme of equality, about our party focusing in on the issue of equality. And I think I bring some things to the table. I think I worked in a, in a very successful NDP government through much of the 90s and I think when you're aiming to be the government of Canada it's not a bad thing to know a bit something about being in government and uh, I'm not gonna have to learn how to campaign nationally on the job I worked very closely with Jack on the last four national campaigns and that's a big part of what the next leader has to do we need to win the election we need to run a good government and we need to know why we're there uh, how do you respond to the argument that since you've never been elected as an MP, it makes it tricky for you to go from being an unelected official of the party to the leader of the official opposition in one fell swoop, and that that's a little bit too much of a stretch? Well, as I said, uh, every once in a while, somebody named Brian from Quebec gives it a try. And, um, you know, three of the, la of the six leaders of the NDP were not members of parliament when they were elected as leader. Um, there's no doubt that, uh, you know, being a parliamentarian is a big job. I have a tremendous amount of respect for our parliamentarians, but this is a job of party leader. Um, anybody who's a member of the party can run for it, and I'm not un unfamiliar with politics. I, I bring something to the table, too. Hey, in terms of your experience in the House of Commons, or let's say retail politics, without having that, does that hurt you in any way, the ability to sort of connect with people and just understanding the day-to-day -day mechanics of, of what it is to be a politician? Well, I think I have a pretty good understanding of the day-to-day -day mechanics of being a politician. I've been doing this for almost 30 years. And here's another part of the job. We need to win a national campaign. And here's another part of the job. After we win, we have to run a good government. And knowing how to, how to, how to make a good government work is not a small matter. And here's another point that we need to do. We need to communicate a vision about what we're doing as a party. And I think that I can speak to that. And um, when I'm out there talking about equality and about what that means in our party, I think that's resonating well with members. Uh, you know that a lot of the MPs that were elected uh, in the spring election, uh, there is this sense of, of a lot of them being sort of novices and political neophytes. Does it hurt the idea of having a leader, potentially, who doesn't have that experience either? Well, I'm not a novice. I've been doing this for almost 30 years. <laughs> What is your take on the idea of the Conservatives and how they have tried to portray you, at least in the last couple of weeks, of being sort of a stooge to the unions and how, you know, you can't possibly speak on behalf of all Canadians when you are in the pocket of, of big unions? Well, I, I sent a tweet to my friends in the Prime Minister's office when they put that out, and I told them thanks for the compliment, and I guess I'm making you nervous. Is, is there any truth to that? I don't think so. I mean, I'm, I'm proud of the fact that I work for a trade union. I'm proud of the fact that I'm on the board of a venture capital fund. Um, I'm proud of the fact that I'm the chair of a credit union board. I've got, I've got a, I know, a fair bit of experience that I think people can connect with. And um, I think our party is doing very well by being our party. New Dem people, more and more Canadians are turning to the New Democrats. And our connections to the trade union movement are part of our personality. One of the things that Jack was very successful at was sort of moving the party from, from the left a little bit more to the center. Do you, do you agree with that philosophy? That that's where elections are won? Well, what Jack was doing is he was, he was uh, keeping the party connected with our principles. He was, he was a strong believer, and so am I, that we do not need to become liberals to win. So he was a committed New Democrat. And he was also committed to saying, we're going to be competent in what we do. We're going to learn from our governing traditions. We're going to learn, re uh, learn from where we were government before. And um, I hope to do that too. One of the issues that you floated is this controversial idea of more seats in the House of Commons for Quebec, uh, which doesn't go over that well in other provinces, particularly out west. Quebec's population doesn't merit more seats in the House of Commons, whereas Ontario, uh, Alberta, and BC do. So, h how do you explain that idea that Quebec should get more MPs in the House of Commons? Well, this is a tricky issue, and it's going to need a good Canadian compromise. So we begin with the fact that we've got constituencies out there, notably in Western Canada and Ontario, that have got over 100,000 citizens in them, and that's not a good idea. And that creates a democratic issue, and it also creates a challenge for the MP to service the riding. So we need to increase the number of seats in those provinces to get that right. 
So then the question becomes, what do you do about the historic role of other provinces? Quebec is North America's only French-speaking jurisdiction. We all know it has a unique role in the Federation. And there is a debate about preserving Quebec's place in the House of Commons. And I think that we need to strike a balance here that, that uh, is a reasonable Canadian compromise. So in addition to adding those seats where they need to go in the rest of the country, I favor a, an adjustment to the number of seats in Quebec to go some distance toward preserving its traditional role in the House of Commons. How does your party ever recapture the magic of Jack Layton? By continuing his work. I mean, nobody's going to replace Jack Layton. Jack Layton couldn't replace Jack Layton. Jack Layton in the first year of his leadership was not the Jack Layton in the ninth year of his leadership. But what he has built, we can build on. And what he, the road that he set us on, we can continue down. And that's the discussion that we're having in our party today. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Saturday.